Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord as we celebrate and worship together today. Exciting opportunities that we have. You'll note in the bulletin uh, different opportunities for Lent as that comes uh, February 14th. And uh, tonight we have our Next Generation event, uh, especially for um, our fur babies and all of the special things we'll be bringing to help the uh, Humane Society. And that also is a dinner at 5. And on uh, Tuesday, January 23rd, our Senior and Adult Enrichment uh, will have Jean Reedy, our parish nurse, share with us. And on Tuesday night, uh, Bishop Berlin is speaking uh, at Hollywood Hills, United Methodist, and uh, several of us are going for that. We'd love to have you join us. Um, and then uh, Church Council is February 4th. Um, I also want to invite Jay, Jay Smith, up to share a little bit with us. Good morning, everyone. This morning I'm speaking to you as the chair, co-chair of stewardship. And while our stewardship campaign does not start until February the 4th, I want you to let you know that we're having a pre-stewardship program. Last week, Pastor Jill talked about the many ways that as a church we're involved with our community, be it uh, Hope South Florida, um, <laughs> Cuba, Kenya, all sorts of things that we're involved in. So leading up to our stewardship campaign, I want you to consider what is stewardship? What does stewardship mean to you? In the hallway leading from the parlor to the lobby, you'll see a banner that's been set up to show you what stewardship efforts look like. As you look at it this morning, after you meet in there for coffee and fellowship, you'll see photos presenting a few of the ways stewardship is touching and changing lives. I know some of you have traveled to Cuba over the years on mission trips. Uh, you're involved in Second Chance Society, Hope South Florida, uh, many activities of our preschool, just to mention a few events. So your assignment, and I hope you will choose to participate, is to look through your photos. And on your phone, you all have, we all use our phones for so many photo opportunities now. You can um, take your photos, send it digitally, I guess, to CVS or Walgreens, and they will print out your photos for you. And like in 30 minutes, you can go and pick them up. So we want you to bring those with you to church over the next few weeks during, before, the stewardship starts and then during the stewardship and uh, we'll add them to the banner and you'll understand that a little more. I didn't understand what that all meant, what it would look like, but it's up. It's, it's a beautiful presentation of what we do as a church for our community. So it'll be fun to see how we make a difference in the name of First United Methodist Church. Our stewardship campaign begins on February the 4th and concludes with a celebration lunch on March the 3rd. You'll be hearing from a speaker each week, sharing their thoughts and hopes for our future together. It's a really exciting time in the life of the church. The stewardship letter and the pledge cards will be mailed this week, so if by chance you've moved, changed your address, um, please let the church office know because uh, we wanna make sure that you have that opportunity to join in the, in the pledge. And um, I hope you'll take time to look at the stewardship banner this morning. I think you'll be impressed and pleased with how we uh, interact with our community. Thank you. Let us stand now and join in our opening hymn.
affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now I invite you to greet one another, and I, we have a birthday over here, Lynn Mandeville, birthday coming up. And I see Helen Jackson over here, just enjoying her family, that's wonderful. Great to have you all this morning. Good to see everyone. Don't forget the balcony. <laughs> Yeah, Vic wanted me to remind you, you can move around, right? <laughs> For a while there, we used to kind of stay stiff, and it was like, you can move around. You can say hello to people. You're allowed to do that. <laughs> Our first text this morning comes to us from John's Gospel, chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. Hear now the word of God. A new command I give to you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And then from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 36 through 39. And he asked Jesus, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, Love your Lord, the Lord your God, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest command. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your presence. May my words become your message for each of us, your beloved children. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last Sunday, as we commissioned our leaders and our leadership teams, we shared the Great Commission. This is the text in which Jesus calls upon us to claim all authority in heaven and on earth in his name, to go out into all the world, to all creation, to preach, to teach, to reach all nations, to make disciples, and to baptize them. Today, we look at what is called the Great Commandment. Jesus begins in Matthew 22, reminding them of the Jewish commands. The first one, 
Deuteronomy 6, 5, called the Shema, to love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind, your soul and strength. And then Leviticus 19, 18, love your neighbor as yourself. He takes those two out of all the 600 plus commands and laws that the Jewish tradition had. He said, these are raised above all else. But love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. But here in John 13, 34, he goes even further. He tells us a new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. Now, in this text, Jesus is introducing himself as the standard of love. Perhaps you've thought of it before. When you hear love others the way you love yourself, and you're thinking, you know, I could use some work on loving myself, forgiving myself, having God's grace received by myself. Perhaps Jesus realized that, that that standard of love is not ideal. Love others as you love yourself. Instead, he says, love one another as I have loved you. Jesus realized we do not have a healthy love for ourselves, and we do not know how to love one another. Jesus even told his disciples that the world would know that they are his disciples because of their great love. That will be the identification mark that others will see and know that we belong to Jesus. Now the new part of this great and new command is that Jesus is both the standard of love and the source of love. When he imparts the Holy Spirit, he's enabling us to live out that call to love one another. If we are the only source of our love for others, we will flounder and flail, for we can barely even love ourselves. Forgiveness, grace received. How can we love like Jesus? To love without condition rather than trying to love with control. You see, when we try to love with control, we often withhold love unless it meets a certain expectation or a certain condition. How do we love the Jesus way? We began with obedience to God. To love God enables us to receive that blessing and healing and forgiving that imparts to human hearts the ability to love one another. Love that is willing to be wounded without a record of wrongs. How many of us keep a little record of the things that were wrong to bring up later in an argument? Love keeps no record of wrongs. You see, As Brene Brown tells us, we are wired for love and we're hardwired for belonging. It's even in our DNA to love, to be vulnerable, to give someone our heart and to say, I know this can hurt, but I am willing to do it. There are an increasing number of people in the world today that are not willing to do it, not willing to take that risk for fear, of being hurt, for fear of being alienated, abandoned. They'd rather not know love. It brings too much hurt. It brings grief. But that is too huge a price to pay. I believe in many ways Jesus spelled love, R-I-S-K. Take a risk. Love one another as I have loved you. He even asks us to love our enemies, and we say, heaven forbid, how are we supposed to do that? R-I-S-K. Relational, intentional, 
spirit-led and kingdom-bound. That is how we love. God created us in his own image. So often we want to return the favor and create God in our image. But we cannot. We were created for belonging, for community. Yet in our world today, how many feel isolated and alone? Perhaps even feel unlovable or incapable of loving. For many years, the uh, United Methodist Church had a campaign, a slogan, open hearts, open minds, and open doors. It was a slogan to show welcome and hospitality, and it resonated with many people. Jesus' way of loving doesn't always fit with our own personal agenda. Perhaps we have our own preferences, even our own privileges, that we do not understand in this context of great love. It helps us to remember there is not a single person in the world that Jesus does not love. No one. Even the ones we are not so sure about. Even the religious authorities who abuse the power Now, it looks like Jesus doesn't love them. He calls them vipers, whitewashed tombs for being self-righteous. But the love he has for them looks like honest confrontation, forthright challenges to self-righteousness. That is love, too. Sometimes love looks like flipping tables in a place that has become too comfortable with looking down on others. Sometimes love looks like that. Now the old commandment that came from Leviticus that Jesus lifted out asked us to love others as we love ourselves. But the new command asked us to love others the way Jesus does. To love one another as Jesus does. To love even those who may not be our neighbors. You see, Jesus completely redefines the neighborhood. Jesus loved those who were even outside the neighborhood. Outside the society. Outside those places that chose to ignore the others. Barbara Brown Taylor, a pastor, put it this way, the only clear line I draw these days is this, when my religion tries to come between me and my neighbor, I will choose my neighbor. Jesus never commanded me to love my religion. Jesus commanded us to love our neighbors. Jesus didn't say it would be easy, but he would not have commanded it if it were impossible. Isn't it true that he is the source that equips us to have that kind of love? Jesus wanted us to show the world how he loved, to give us that example as well as the Holy Spirit to help us to accomplish it. Loving like Jesus is the best way to live. Loving like Jesus invites us to love ourselves with a godly love of forgiveness and grace and healing and to love those around us, even those we may not even see. It helps us to shed any layers of our own self-loathing as well as self-righteousness or self-aggrandizing. We can let go of these layers of resentment as well as envy, layers of worry and anxiety as well as fear, layers of entitlement or preference or privilege as well as this feeling of inadequacy or a victim or not someone with a voice. That love cuts through all of it cuts to the core, the 
the love in Christ begs to restore, to heal, to help. A lot of times people will say, love is blind, but not this kind of love. You see, Jesus' love is not blind. He sees clearly everything. No secrets, nothing hidden. And he chooses still to love. Love is not blind. The Jesus way, love sees everything. Now, we don't have to wait until Valentine's Day to love this way. We can choose it now. Countless scriptures tell us what this way looks like. In Romans 12, 10, it is devoted. In Romans 14, 19, it builds up. It doesn't tear down. Romans 15, 7, it accepts and affirms. 1 Corinthians 12, 25, it cares. Galatians 5, 13, it serves. Galatians 6, 2, this love bears burdens. Ephesians 4, 3, this love is kind and tenderhearted and forgiving. And 1 Corinthians 13, this love keeps no record of wrongs. It is kind, it is patient, it lasts. 1 Thessalonians 5.11, this love encourages us. Now, Jesus' way to love is, in fact, a protest against any and all ways that religion is used to crush or control or manipulate. You see, Jesus has an unconditional love that calls forth the best in us. It's not that his standards are low. His standards are higher than anyone's standards. This is the highest standard of love. Jesus invites us to grace, not to guilt and shame. Jesus invites us to hope and new life, not to judgment and condemnation or hate-filled opinion. The way of Jesus Christ, this is the great command. We talked about the Great Commission asking us to go out to share with all the good news. The Great Command asks us to love the Jesus way. That too involves going and all. The word love appears over 570 times in the scripture. It's described in many ways. Agape love, which is unconditional. Hesed, which is steadfast, never ending. Philia, which is a friendly love, kind love. How we love that neighbor, even that enemy. Ahav love, companionship, commitment, belonging to one another. As we begin this new year, let us commit to the Great Commission and to the Great Command to love the Jesus way, to be called forth as his own. Let us do it. Let it all be done in love. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our song of reflection is Amazing Grace.
Let us go to God in prayer. O Lord, most holy and gracious, we come before you. We are aware of the great love you showed to us and Jesus the Christ. The great love that you call forth in us to love one another as he has loved us, as you have loved us. O Lord, forgive us when we are short-sighted, when we are holding on to resentment. Help us let it go. Open us, open our minds and our hearts and our lives to be a reflection of your grace, your divine love. Lord, we pray for our families and our friends, for those we are in relationship with. We pray for those who we may feel are like enemies. We need a healing. We need help. Lord, at times we need a boundary from what is healthy and what is not. We need to be reminded of how Christ loved, even his tough love, Sometimes we need that too. O oh Lord, enable us to be your faithful people. Enable us to reveal to the world what kind of God you are. The God we see so clearly in Jesus the Christ. Help us, O oh God. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand together for our closing hymn, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. the benediction. I did have a couple of announcements to make. We are doing our year-end reports, and we did very well last year uh, with our pledging and our, our giving. You were very generous beyond what you pledged, uh, but we also uh, had a legacy gift, which was uh, just to, to remind us of honoring those particularly who've gone before us or those we want to honor right now, and 
someone asked me this morning, how is that coming along? And that was, it's close to $220,000, and that's our legacy giving. So I want to give a shout out to God for <laughs> blessing us. If any of you want to uh, give a legacy gift in honor or memory of someone, uh, please just uh, let us know and give a little note to us. Some of you are visiting. You may not know we have pedestals to receive our gifts or a, a code rather than the ushers coming forward, and uh, you're invited to do it that way. Let us receive God's blessing. The Lord bless us and keep us and make his face shine upon us. May God grant to you his peace, the peace that passes all understanding. And may God's love shine brightly through your life, especially in this often dark world. Love and light. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.